non-compete highlights. August 17, 2021. Begin feed. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. That's why we're still there. We were clear-eyed about the risk. We planned for every contingency, but I always promised the American people that I would be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. Now, is that true? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? We may never know if that's true or not. Like we said yesterday, there was some sort of ulterior motive to this. Yep. Right? Like, regardless of the reason that Biden chose to pull out like this, and regardless of how much they knew about how this would, you know, pan out, mm -hmm. they definitely did this to benefit somehow the, the bourgeoisie. Yeah. Right? Like, that's there's no doubt about that. Yep. So somehow this was all it's premeditated to, to benefit the, the capitalist class. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, the developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. We spent over a trillion dollars. We trained and Spend equipped on the Afghan fucking military house camp. force right. with some 300,000 strong. A trillion okay, dollars. Now, this part's important. So, yes, they did spend th uh, a trillion dollars. That is true. Um, we spent over a trillion dollars. We trained and equipped an Afghan military force. This part's important. We trained and equipped an Afghan military so force. 300,000 strong. A force larger in size than the militaries of many of our NATO allies. We gave them every tool they could need. We paid their salaries. Provided for the maintenance of their air force. Something the Taliban doesn't have. Taliban does not have an air force. We provided close air support. We gave them every chance yep. to determine their own future. Now, this is where he goes and he starts to blame, essentially. The, he blames the puppet government, which the United States of America built, and he blames the military, which the United States of America built, right? And he, he's trying to build uh, distance, right? So he's like, we gave them all this money. We gave them all these weapons. They had all these soldiers. And by the way, remember, tens of thousands of these soldiers that the United States of America trained and equipped have died now, yeah. right? So now he's trying to build this distance and pretend that the United States of America did not build this entire entity. So that's what's happening now. We could not provide them was the will to fight for that future. There's some very brave and capable Afghan special You're forces disgusting, units and, and soldiers. <laughs> but if Afghanistan is unable to mount any real resistance to the Taliban now, there is no chance that one year, one more year, five more years, or 20 more years, the U.S. <laughs> military boots in the ground would have made any difference. Here's what I believe to my core. It is wrong to order American troops to step up when Afghanistan's own armed forces would not. The political leaders of Afghanistan were unable to come together for the good of their people, it's so hard to unable to negotiate for the future of their country when the chips were down. They would never have done this so is, while U.S. troops remained in Afghanistan. This is his basically his... Um... His voice so slow and so sleepy <laughs> that it's so hard for me to concentrate. It says, I'm not a native speaker. So what does he just say again? So right now he's, he's basically doing the... Um, who was it? Lyndon Johnson, who said, uh, we're not about to send American boys nine to 10,000 miles away from home to do what Asian boys ought to be doing for themselves. This is Biden's version of that, of that quote. They would never have done so while U.S. troops remained in Afghanistan bearing the brunt of the fighting for them. 
bearing the brunt of the fighting for them. And our true strategic competitors, China and Russia, Ugh. would love nothing more than the United States to continue to funnel billions of dollars in resources and attention into stabilizing Afghanistan indefinitely. So like, there you go. The China and Russia. Like China and Russia, they both have a nothing to do. They have absolutely nothing to do with this whatsoever, but you have got to have that scapegoat. That's the whole thing. The USA cannot take responsibility for anything. A 20-year project, okay? Listen to what Biden just said. Talks about how they spent a trillion dollars in 20 years. They had the United States military train thousands and thousands of soldiers. They gave them all this material, right? This was all a USA constructed project. And now the USA deflects. Well, it's not our fault because it's because the military that, that we helped to train and build isn't fighting. It's not our fault. It's because the political leaders that we hand selected and installed as a puppet government are fleeing and not and not standing up. It's not our fault. It's because China and Russia uh, some exist and like they would want to see us get bogged down here longer and longer. And somehow that has something to do with anything oh. like that. That was thrown in for like literally no reason whatsoever. Literally. That there are so many liberals who've bought into the whole Cold War 2.0 anti-China, anti-Russia narrative that by now. This is what we see. We have we, we have them eating out of your hand. All you have to do is talk about like Russia or. And literally here, too, if they really want to mention Russia and China now, like the whole world hates the USA. Yeah. And we would love to see the collapse of the U.S. states. Exactly. Right. Right. The whole world is that not just Russia and China. I'm sorry, but it is a fact. Yeah. You're the biggest terrorist, the biggest bully of the whole world. And we would love to see you collapse. Yeah. I talk, I'm talking about the government, the state. When I hosted President Ghani and Chairman Abdullah at the White House in June, and again when I spoke by phone to Ghani in July, we had very frank conversations. We talked about how Afghanistan should prepare to fight their civil wars after the U.S. military departed, to clean up the corruption in government so that the government could function for the Afghan people. We talked extensively about the need for Afghan leaders to unite politically. They failed to do any of that. I also urged them to engage in diplomacy, to seek a political settlement with the Taliban. Yeah. Could you imagine Listen. if Barack Obama said that, <laughs> like in like 2014 or 2015? Could you imagine if Barack Obama said, hey, we should just negotiate with the Taliban? Yeah. We should just build a, 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 a coalition government with the Taliban. Yeah. The, the, especially the Republicans would have gone ballistic if, if Barack Obama said that like eight years ago. Right. But here's Biden saying, I encouraged the puppet government that we built to negotiate and form a coalition government with the last puppet government we built <laughs> back in the 90s, the Taliban. It's so incredible. This is a massive quality. This is a massive quality shift. Right. This is a massive shift. It's so fun that people that. People just act like the Taliban have nothing to do with the USA. Mr. Ghani insisted that the Afghan forces would fight, but obviously he was wrong. Left again to ask of those who argue that we should stay. How many more generations of America's daughters and sons would you have me send to fight Afghans Afghanistan's civil war? How many more lives, American lives, is it worth? <laughs> they only care about Morgan life. No, this is true. And it's and it's very important. In this entire speech, mm. Biden never talks about the 70,000, at least 70,000 yeah. Afghan civilians. Civilians. Who died. Women and children. And never talks about the quarter of a million Afghani people who died. So, like, that that's true. He never talks about that. He's only talking about the value and, and the worth and the merit of American USA lives. American lives. That's it. And that's also an important part of this this doctrinal language, right? That is why, like, we always just talk about the 58,000 uh, U.S. troops died in Vietnam and never care about the 3 million Vietnamese civilians. 2 million civilians, 3 million total. Oh, yeah. yeah. 3 million total. So, yeah. Sorry. That we know of, of course. Yes. And, well, and that's five not, more yeah. people, the victims of Agent Orange. That's not counting the, the 5 million victims of Agent Orange, right? How many endless rows of headstones in Arlington National Cemetery? I'm clear on my answer. I will not repeat the mistakes we've made in the past. Mistake of staying and fighting indefinitely 
in a conflict that is not in the national interest of the United States, of doubling down on a civil war in a foreign country, of attempting to remake a country through the endless military deployments of U.S. forces. Now, this is interesting, too, because he's saying we don't want to build nations and we don't want to do all that. But then that totally contradicts what they talk about with, like, for instance, Cuba. Mm. Right. They totally want to do a nation building exercise in Cuba. Absolutely. Like they're 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 dedicating like millions of dollars. They're trying to build this like Internet thing now. They've they've been caught trying to build these like fake social media networks. So they're totally involved in trying to destabilize and build nation in Cuba and many, many other places around the world. But now they're going to pretend that they're not interested in doing that in <laughs> Afghanistan. If you're going to just buy into the Those lies. are the mistakes <laughs> we cannot continue to repeat because we have significant vital interest in the world that we cannot afford to ignore. I also want to acknowledge how painful this is to so many of us. The scenes we're seeing in Afghanistan they're gut-wrenching, particularly for our veterans, our diplomats, humanitarian workers, for anyone who has spent time on the ground working to support the Afghan people, for those who have lost loved ones in Afghanistan, and for Americans who have fought and served in the country. Crocodile tears. Remember that the USA <sighs> turned their back on Kurdish translators in Iraq and all, all the other yep. translators in Iraq turned their back. And just They just deported 8,000 uh, Vietnamese Americans back to Vietnam who yep. were essentially re refugees, quote unquote, from yes. uh, from the South. And, and, you know, the list goes on and on. The USA does not honor its uh, agreements with people who, who back <laughs> them during these like imperialist campaigns. So you can I can guarantee you that people who supported the USA-backed puppet government in Afghanistan are not going to get much protection from the USA, nope. especially if they don't make it out uh, right now. No, so. daydreaming if you really think that. Yeah. Serve our country in Afghanistan. This is deeply, deeply personal. <sighs> it is for me as well. I've worked on these issues as long as anyone. Crocodile I've been throughout Afghanistan during this war, while the war was going on, from Kabul to Kandahar, to the Kunar Valley. I've traveled there on four different occasions. I met with the people. I've spoken to the leaders. I spent time with our troops. And I came to understand firsthand what was and was not possible in Afghanistan. So now we're focused on what is possible. We will continue to support the Afghan people. We will lead with our diplomacy, our international influence, and our humanitarian aid. Now, he's talking now about USAID, NED, and other CIA projects, Voice of America, Human Rights Watch, all these different organizations. He's talking about the soft power of the USA. So we have a promise now that they're going to continue to have drone strikes, continue to have CIA black sites, continue to have special forces operations, airstrikes. That's going to continue to happen in Afghanistan. He said that earlier in the video. And they're going to continue to have soft power intervention and espionage and yep. destabilizing efforts through organizations like USAID and such. We'll continue to speak out for the basic rights of the Afghan people, of women and girls, just as we speak out all over the world. I've been clear, the human rights must be the center of our foreign policy. Now, what is the doctrinal language? What do they mean by human rights? Because they're human certainly not rights. talking about things like feeding people. Because if, the, if they're talking about people having food, shelter, basic health care, things like that, then nobody in the USA has human rights. But the way to do it is not through endless military deployments. It's with our diplomacy, our economic tools. Soft power. And rallying the world to CIA, join us. USAID, NED. Yep. Human Rights Watch. Let me lay out the yep. current mission in Afghanistan. And installing fascist public government. I was asked to authorize, and I did, 6,000 U.S. troops to deploy to Afghanistan for the purpose of assisting in the departure of U.S. and allied civilian personnel from Afghanistan and to evacuate our Afghan allies and vulnerable Afghans to safety outside of Afghanistan and ensure continued operation. So now you just talking about the short-term stuff. Yeah. We're taking over air traffic control. We have safely shut down our embassy and transferred our diplomats. Our, di our diplomatic presence is now consolidated at the airport as well. Over the coming days, we intend to transport out thousands of American citizens who have been living and working in Afghanistan. We'll also continue to support the safe departure of civilian personnel. you got to admit this, though. 
And, uh, this is a parallel between Saigon in 1975 and Afghanistan today. Both of those were massive black spots on the international reputation of the USA. The whole world right now is looking at the USA right now, you know, seeing them kind of a little bit lower. Like they, they've been just sinking and sinking and sinking and taking L's for, you yeah. know, years now. Operation Allies Refugee, which I announced back in July, has already moved 2,000 Afghans who are eligible for special immigration visas and their families to the United States. In the coming days, the U.S. military will provide assistance to move, to move more SIV eligible Afghans and their families out of Afghanistan. We're also expanding refugee access to cover other vulnerable Afghans who work for our embassy, U.S. non-governmental agencies or uh, the U.S. non-governmental organizations, and Afghans who otherwise are at great risk in U.S. news agencies. I know there are concerns about why we did not begin evacuating Afghans civilians sooner. Part of the answer is some of the Afghans did not want to leave earlier, still hopeful for their country. And part of it because the Afghan government and its supporters discouraged us from organizing a mass exodus to avoid triggering, as they said, a crisis of confidence. So again, this is just throwing the people that the USA installed under the bus. Again, the USA built this entire government that he's now blaming for everything. American troops are performing this mission as professionally and as effectively as they always do, but it is not without risks. As we carry out this departure, we have made it clear to the Taliban, if they attack our personnel or disrupt our operation, the U.S. presence will be swift and the response will be swift and forceful. Our current military mission will force. be short in time, limited in scope, and focused in its objectives. This is a message, I think, to the Taliban. Like, please don't hurt us. <laughs> We're not going to be in here for long. We're trying to get out as fast as we can. <laughs> we'll, we'll fight back if you do, but please don't. <laughs> and once we have completed this mission, we will conclude our military withdrawal. We will mm -hmm. end America's longest war after 20 long years of bloodshed. Well, we were in Vietnam for 20 years, but we pretended we weren't for 10 of those, so. Are sadly proof that no amount of military force would ever deliver a stable, united, secure Afghanistan, as known in history as the graveyard of empires. What's happening now could just as easily happen five years ago or 15 years in the future. You have to be honest. Our mission in Afghanistan has taken many missteps, made many missteps over the past two decades. I'm now the fourth- Understatement of the year to preside over war in Afghanistan. Two Democrats and two Republicans. I will not pass this responsibility on, responsibility on to a fifth president. I will not mislead the American people by claiming that just a little more time in Afghanistan will make all the difference. Now this part, again, credit where credit's due. He's right about this. Yes. And this is what Luna and I have been saying for weeks now. Another six months, year, two years, whatever. What are they gonna do that they haven't been able to do in 20 years? And that's why I don't really buy the thing about how this is all Trump's fault and they had to get out so quickly. Like eight months is enough time where they could have much better prepared things if they really wanted to, or they could have just stood up to the Taliban if that's really a priority. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, but I will give credit where credit's due. Yeah, it, it's like uh, pull the bandaid off. There's nothing that another six months or year is going to do to 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 help uh, that situation at all. Nor will I shrink from my share of responsibility for where we are today and how we must move forward from here. I am president of the United States of America. Truman, and the buck stops with me. Truman, true quote. Oh. Buck stops I'm here. By the facts <laughs> we now face. But I do not regret my decision to end America's war fighting like three and maintain imperialist a laser uh, focus on our counterterrorism mission there and other parts of the world. Our mission to degrade counter -terrorism. the terrorist threat of Al-Qaeda and, and, and kill Osama bin Laden was a success. A decades-long <laughs> effort to overcome centuries of history and permanently change and remake Afghanistan was not. And I wrote and believed it never could be. I cannot and will not ask our troops to fight on endlessly in another, in another country's civil war, taking casualties. Suffering. Continuously in another country civil war. Just yeah. wait. It's coming up. It is not, Leaving just families not just a matter of time. Yeah. This is not in our national security interest. It is not what the American people want. It is not what our troops who have sacrificed so much over the past two decades deserve. I made a commitment to the American people when I ran for president that I would bring America's military involvement in Afghanistan to an end. While it's been hard and messy, and yes, far from perfect, I just that moved to a different target. More importantly, <laughs> I made a commitment to the brave men and women who served this nation still be there. that I wasn't going to ask them to continue to risk their lives in the military action that should have ended long ago. Our leaders did that in Vietnam when I got here as a young man. <laughs> I will not do it in Afghanistan. I know That's my scary. decision will be criticized, uh. but I would rather take all that criticism than pass this decision on to another president of the United States, yet another one. They fucking fifth. compared Afghanistan right to one, Vietnam? the right decision for our people. The right one for our brave service members who risked their lives serving our nation. That's the right one for America. Thank you. All right. We got That's it. All right.
Thank you, thanks, Biden. Thanks, Biden. Fuck off, Biden. Okay. Um, so that's it. Now, I, I, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about really quickly. The difference between what the USA and these imperialist capitalist nations say when they talk about, you know, liberating and what we believe as socialists. Yeah. So when the USA talks about liberating these countries and, and, and that sort of thing, it's very cynical. And as Biden just explained... The USA the, liberate any country is fucking laughable. The fact is, it's all it's all cynical. It's all for you know capitalist interests. It's for the military industrial complex to make a lot of money for capitalists. It is to pave the way for entrenching imperialist uh, operations of corporations. Mm -hmm. And again, it's for the cynical protection of American lives and national self-interest of the USA. There's no actual intention for liberation versus the leftist uh, conception of liberation, which is where we actually do want to free the whole world. I mean, we do want, we say, no, nobody's free until everybody's free. Workers of the world unite, right? But the leftists in the U.S. now, quote unquote, the leftists, right. to the point that like, liberation means U.S. interventionism. Unfortunately, there are a shitload of U.S. self-described leftists who think that we should have remained in Afghanistan, who think that the American uh, propaganda machine is telling the truth about places like Afghanistan and Cuba and Vietnam. And yes. Uh, it's it's very disheartening. It's nothing new. We've talked about this in the past. I mean, there was a uh, Bernstein, you know, back in the 1800s, yes. who was pro-imperialism. Harrington, the founder of the DSA, who was pro-imperialism. Yeah, Michael Harrington. So it's nothing new, right? But it is dis it's disheartening that there are still leftists, especially in the USA, who support the American war machine and imperialism. They say they don't. They equivocate and they say, oh, you know, we want the USA to leave Afghanistan, but we got to have an exit plan. We got to do it carefully, which is exactly what Harrington said about the Vietnam War. You know, we got to have mm -hmm. peace talks. We got to pull out carefully. We got to have a plan. We have an exit strategy, blah, blah, blah. It's like, please go study the history of imperialism and realize that there's no universe in which the USA will have some kind of exit plan that benefits anybody except for the bourgeoisie and the global... Mm -hmm. Capitalist Imperialist Project, so. Subscribe, 